guys welcome back to my channel so it's another video and I'm really really excited for this video I'm excited but not so excited but then you know whatever I still decided to do this video because I felt like this conversation or like this whole analysis was long overdue so if you're wondering what my video is going to be about it's about Gossip Girl and for all those people who are going to be like oh my god I didn't Gossip Girl end like six years ago yes it did but I feel like there are some things in Gossip Girl that we have to address now so stick with me subscribe to my channel my name is Ifwa Labi and we are going to do this so we can all agree that Gossip Girl is a hella problematic show because think about it if Gossip Girl was released in 2018 it would have been cancelled after like the first episode because that's how problematic it is because right when the first episode aired there were so many problems with it and don't get me wrong Gossip Girl is like my spirit show like when I'm down or anything, I go back to watch Gossip Girl reruns. When Gossip Girl premiered in 2007, I was just about to write my BEC. That's like to finish junior high school. And I was instantly hooked to it. So I remember I used to like tell everybody about Gossip Girl, like, you know what, let's watch Gossip Girl. And why I'm doing this show is that 10 years or 11 years down the line, looking back on the show, you know, with a sort of maturity, even though I'm not that old, but with a sort of maturity and like, you know, hindsight and watching the show, I kind of find like, most of the problems or most of the stuff that were like god how did this get past anybody like the show has a lot of cringe worthy moments right and that's what i'm going to do and the focus of this video isn't on how problematic their parents was hi cecil Rhodes, lily but lily humphrey lily vanda woodson lily whatever her name was at that point in time so the idea behind gossip girl that there was this big brother thing that was following your every move your every interaction and was broadcasting it to the whole world and your friends would put you on blast your family could put you on blast like anybody who could see you at any point in time doing something that they deemed shady or something that they deemed you know noteworthy could actually put you on blast for gossip girl to put you on yeah no no and funny enough when i was watching gossip girl i was like man i wish there was something like that for my friends and i so that we put each other on blast but i don't think that myself like man if this thing was around i would have lost so many friends and like people would have died actually but this is the thing this is actually where i'm looking at gossip girl from i'm looking at gossip girl in this time of me too in this time of times up in this time of you know sexual harassment suits and in this time of how every woman every girl is speaking out about the harassment they've been through the assault they've been through the rape the defilement the sense of entitlement that men have over our bodies or the sense of entitlement that men have over other men women have over men you know that whole I'm, so I'm looking at it from this era because think about it in the first episode of Gossip Girl there were like two instances of assault or two instances where the rape culture was a bit bended so it was like Gossip Girl came at an era where you know we didn't have a clear understanding of how rape culture works of how to speak out against harassment how to speak out against you know how uncomfortable we felt around certain situations and it's weird because the, the guy that at the end of the show we were rooting for at the beginning of the show his character was someone that when you see you want to throw stones at because Chuck Boss wasn't someone to like in the first episode he tried to assault somebody like let that just sink in in the first ever Gossip Girl episode Chuck Boss tried to assault someone and because he felt very entitled because he was rich and he's Chuck Boss and everything but and you see this is how I feel like Gossip Girl kind of twisted our minds and how we related to assault because it was like it, it wasn't really clear cut on what consent was because there were so many instances of sex happening in Gossip Girl that it wasn't consented, like it wasn't consensual sex because it was like, okay, I feel like I want to do it or because, you know, there's this pressure on me to have the sex, that's why I actually have to do it. But if you're looking at Chuck in particular, his sense of entitlement to a lot of things were very wrong and even his relationship with Blair that was supposed to be, you know, relationship goals because there are a lot of Facebook pages and Twitter pages that are dedicated to Chuck and Blair their everlasting love story but think about it Chuck and Blair's relationship is very problematic because they were very manipulative of each other they didn't most of they didn't care about each other's feelings they were all trying to one-up each other it's like that's not how and this is a show that was appealing to 18 to 25 or even younger 15 to 25 because when I started watching the show I was 14 so you can imagine how and i'm telling you this is a show that was actually 
my be like that's how I thought that okay if I want to get into a relationship I want like this kind of relationship but growing up you realize that that's not the kind of relationship they're supposed to let young women or young men want you're not supposed to want a relationship that will you know manipulate you that's going to let you feel like you have to you know kowtow who you are to someone else you have to change who you are to someone else and this is a show that had mass appeal and yeah the, the fashion in gossip girl was amazing i mean I'm, i wasn't upper east side rich but it was something to look forward to like every time there was like this event or like there was a kiss ball there was the masquerade events their branches the fashion was something to look forward to even right now if i go back and i watch some of the episodes and i look at what serena van der Woodson wore or what blair waldorf wore it's like man i could rock this today and like go for some brunch somewhere what we are going to talk about is the fact that it did not do well for young people also another problematic part of us of girl was the victim shaming because think about it if Jenny had in the first episode if Jenny had gone out to say that oh my god Chuck tried to assault me she would have been shamed for it because everybody would have said that, oh my god she asked for it and oh my god she was a slut and oh my god she's like an upstart and all of those other things but think about it this is Chuck Buzz because he he's powerful he's rich he's like untouchable and there are so many instances in the course of the six seasons of Gossip Girl where a lot of victims of assault were actually shamed for what they went through and it's really wrong because and I'm not trying to like put the show down because I'm telling you after shooting this video I'm actually going to go back and watch season four or season three I don't even know where I've gotten to now I think that's like my third rerun but I think I'm going to go back to season three because it's a great show Gossip Girl is a great show but let's not forget that it being a great show was very problematic because in this age trying to open up the conversation of consent of assault of harassment of what it means when you say no and no means no and how people feel like no means yes and when i say no i mean you should try harder why didn't you try harder going back to what gossip girl and i'm like this has informed so many of my decisions i have made towards the opposite sex because there have been so many occasions where i felt like i'm very uncomfortable in this situation but I don't know if I talk about it, everyone's going to be like, ah, oh, Larisha, he asked for it, or Larisha, you were the one that decided to do it. Oh my god, if or no. The reason why I actually did this video was that I saw some article in the fact that they wanted to do a reunion of Gossip Girl, they wanted to do a reboot of Gossip Girl. And that's my thing. So if it's going to come back, it should come back be more socially aware. Because I feel like Gossip Girl wasn't socially aware. It was all over the place in terms of how it dealt with its representation of how girls should act of how the guys should act towards girls and all of that as you see none of the guys on gossip girl were like goals not dan humphrey not nate archibald not especially not chuck bass let's not talk about kata basin um sebastian the teacher all of the men on gossip girl were hella problematic even their father rufus humphrey so problematic because these three guys right dan nate chuck especially chuck and chuck being like the person i was supposed to fall in love with he raped someone he took advantage of the girls in his life the girl that was supposed to be the love of his life he manipulated on her cheated on her did so many things to her that it's like you can't do that to someone you say you love or someone you even say you like and even his relations with Serena when they became step siblings, right? At some point, I feel like why, like why? So that's the thing. And the girls to have their own problems. So you're not and Blair. No, that's not how friends should act towards each other. So that's my thing about Gossip Girl. Gossip Girl was like a great show. Gossip Girl was. You know how Sex and the City was to older women? That's what Gossip Girl is to me. Gossip Girl was like the show that I watched that I tried to emulate Serena. I felt I felt like I was more like Serena than Blur because, you know, I kind of connected to her. Going back to what she find out that the rape culture that we are trying to, you know, talk about now, open the conversation about now, has been insidious in a lot of the things we watch. And that kind of informs how we deal with harassment how we deal with uncomfortable situations with the opposite sex or even with the same sex because if you're around a lesbian and you're trying to like communicate that no i don't want that kind of thing 
how because you don't want to offend the person's feelings because i mean you've been taught that you're supposed to think about the other person's feelings and not how you feel in that situation it kind of like defeats the whole purpose that's my little thing about it because i was watching i was re-watching gossip girl i was going on the fan site and i was doing oh my god gossip girl should come back oh my god gossip girl should come back but then i thought about it that if gossip girl is going to come back in this 2018 no it will be cancelled after the first two episodes and this is the thing it's great but let's try to open up the conversation on assholes let's try to open up the conversation on consent especially consent consent is like such a huge deal to me because i feel like we try so hard to like shift the conversation or like pull it under the on, under the seat try to avoid it as much as possible because a lot of girls are still not comfortable talking about it and especially in ghana especially like in the university when i finished university like, when they try to tell people that oh my god that boy did this to me and i felt uncomfortable everybody looks at you like mm, feels like well you were asking for it even when you're trying to tell them that no it's just i did not expect you to do that to me but then you still ended up doing that to me and i felt uncomfortable about it but you still can't say anything about it because you'll be victim shamed so that's my thing let's in as much as we're trying to open up the conversation on assault let's also try not to false accuse people i really hate it when like people try to shout rape you know the boy that cried wolf the girl that cried rape or the guy that cried rape no because you're going to make it harder for other people who have actually been assaulted other people are actually going through the psychological effects of rape to actually not be able to speak up and then the perpetrators walk free so 11 years after gossip girl 10 years after gossip girl i feel like we should revisit our rape culture we should revisit how like you know the rose color lenses in which we look at gossip girl because that show didn't help a lot of us to deal with how we relate with consent how we relate with sex so anyways i'm done with this video 10 years after gossip girl what like have you gone back to rewatch gossip girl what are the lessons you learned from gossip girl do you think i don't know what are the things that you watch gossip girl right now and you feel like oh my god this shouldn't have been included because there are many scenes that i'm like oh my god oh my god who included this in it so let me know what you think about 10 years after gossip girl who was your favorite character in it i still my favorite character still is serena van der woodson even though she used to annoy me but she's still like my spirit animal so let me know in the comments below if gossip girl was your favorite or you were more nile 210 or you were more laguna beach whatever show you watch whilst you were growing up let me know in the comments below and let me know what your thoughts are about concert let me know what your thoughts are about how gossip girl you know spoke about the rape culture how it spoke about victim shame and how it handled all the other very problematic issues like diversity like how it handled the classism in gossip girl you know so that's i'm done with this video my name is ifa labi as i've already said and i don't know whilst you're here right there's like some other videos i've done that you should check out and they're going to be here so let's not like let's not pretend that you're not going to press it because i'm watching you right and subscribe to my channel and i'll see you in my next video